in the house of the Lord, and as we continue on in our study from the first epistle of John, uh, that's where we will be uh, for a while, but I really believe that this particular writing in first John will help you establish who you are in Christ, and it's very important that you know what you believe, you know in whom you have believed, and you know that your name is written in the book of life for eternal life. And so as we explore the things of God this morning, uh, you might want to take some notes. To help you out, I uh, may have a handout that's in your uh, flyer, and uh, I'm going to briefly just cover that, uh, and then we're going to get into the rest of the uh, the text of chapter 2 and chapter 3. Uh, I want to encourage you, if you haven't said this, that you would say, I love the Word of God. The Bible is the instruction book that guides me daily, gives me hope and assurance, and uh, it will keep me in the storms of life. Uh, we all go through circumstances and situations. And in fact, Jesus said, in this world you will have troubles and you will have things that will come against you, but be of good cheer, I have overcome. And he was implying that we can be overcomers. So if you will join me this morning, turn in your Bibles to uh, the epistle of 1 John and uh, or take out your uh, worksheet and if you have a pencil, there's pencils in the chairs in front of you and back of you. Uh, and write down some of these thoughts. Now, the title of our text, our message this morning is, Let Faith Abide in You. Faith is the starting point. In uh, Hebrews 11.6, it says, Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. A couple questions there. Are you diligently seeking God? And the other thought is, do you believe there's a God in heaven? And how does he work? And how does he work in your life or in the life of others if he's truly the God of heaven and earth? And I trust that you some of these things you know, but you need to be reminded. Paul wrote that in some of his epistles, that as long as I'm in this tent, meaning his body, he was going to stir up the church, you are the church, and remind them that you need to put on the revelation, the truth, the knowledge of Christ in you. And so, if you have experienced, according to John's Gospel, uh, in chapter 3, he said, uh, Nick, Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, telling him, you need to be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. And then he goes on to say, you need to be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God. Now, my personal experience, and probably yours, uh, before I came to the Lord, I wasn't looking for God, and I wasn't fully understanding that there was a heaven and that I was, uh, I had a choice, either to choose heaven or choose separation from God for eternity. But before we go into that, join me in a word of prayer. Father, we are thankful to be here this morning, and it's an appointed time. Our lives are in your hands. And Lord, uh, your spirit is truly the teacher. Though you speak through men, you speak through songs, you speak through conversations, you are always present. And you are present to those who are looking for you. And so, Father, we have come today here at Woodland to hear your truth that will establish our lives in you. And I ask that every heart every ear and every every mind would be open to 
your word in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So you need to help me with some amens from time to time. I need help. Amen. Okay. Now, in uh, chapter uh, 16 of Matthew, uh, I'm a little different preacher than some that you might have experienced coming through here. Uh, my mind is always flowing and open to the work of the Holy Spirit, though I have things that I will do one thing after another. Other scriptures jump into my mind, and I, I, I guess they're not only for me, but they're for you, and for you to read later on. Uh, I like to give homework. I have all the answers. <laughs> That's the type of homework I like to give. And my homework that I give you is an open book homework, open book test. Everything I will share with you will be in the Bible. Now, uh, in chapter 16 of Matthew, uh, Jesus asked uh, Peter, who do men say that I am? Some say you're Elijah, and say you're John, uh, John the Baptist, and this and that. And he stopped and he said, Peter, but who do you say that I am? And I ask you the same question. Who do you say Jesus is or was? Who do you believe Jesus to be? And he said, you are Christ, the Son of the living God. And uh, he said, uh, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my Father in heaven. Now God is in heaven, but God is right here. God is in you if you're born again. God will lead you into truth. He never leads you, leads you in, into sin or destruction. or He doesn't bring tests in your life. Tests will come to your life because you live in this world. You are called to be an overcomer. Amen. You can overcome through Christ. He gives you the strength, the ability, the assurance that He's with you and He will guide you through the testings of life. Now, the other thought found in Matthew chapter 16, you see, I said that a few times, hoping that you will write that down and read it later, is that I will give you the keys to the kingdom of God. There are keys. There are places God wants you to unlock that he may show himself to you if you're interested. Or maybe you just want to say, I'm coasting right now. I talk to people like that all the time. In fact, I've shared with you, I've been ministering to a couple gentlemen, and uh, I kind of backed off. It's, it's, see, I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm sure all of you do. <laughs> I've made it a discipline because I like to be with the Lord during that time. It's quiet. My wife is sleeping, my dog is sleeping, and I just wake up. And it's a good time to get up. My mother used to say this as I was growing up. She said, get up, get moving, and you'll get the better things in life. If you sleep in, I know people that sleep in half the day, and they want, want to know why nothing's happening in their life. You're asleep all the time. Wake up! There's good things happening. And God wants to reveal those things to you. Now, there are five things. This has nothing to do with our lesson. I've determined with my amount of time that I have to speak to you. And if you want to speak to me, feel free. I'm willing to talk to you. Oh, i got to back up to this fellow that I've been talking to. Well, I've been texting them, and I text them some scriptures. I don't give them just the easy stuff. I give them the stuff that challenges them if he's aware of what is being said. You see, I'm trying to wake people up to the fact that this word is real. It's a lie. It will transform your life. Yes. Amen. 
Amen. It will give you hope and assurance. And like it has been, it's already been said, God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But I want to tell you something. There's warnings. You can walk away from God. You can get so far out there. God will stay with you. I don't know where the cutoff point is, but I don't want to ever find out. I'm in this for the long haul. And I hope you're in, in it for the long haul. Everyone else may say, well, it's too hard. In fact, they said that to Jesus. Who can do these things that he says? It's hard. He never said it was going to be easy. But he said, I'll be with you. And if you're born again, I'll be in you. And you will have a new spirit. And you will know all things. And you will be able to do great things in my name. In the name of Jesus. I don't have time to tell you of my wife and I were traveling and doing things where we came to situations where our life was in danger and all we could say was Jesus and he was there to deliver us. I'd like to share that with you because he's a great guy. So this fellow I'm talking about, uh, he, uh, I, I sent him a text this morning and some scriptures to read. And I said, uh, consider these things. And I didn't give them too much. Because sometimes I think I give too much, and I probably do. Forgive me. That's the fruit of the Spirit. You have to forgive. <laughs> so, if, you know, if I give you too much, he gives us so much. Slow down. I can't. I have to be about my father's business. This stuff works. It's good. It will transform you. And so I texted him and I gave him this. And he said, you know, I want to thank you. I've been slacking off on the, the readings you have given me. And this came right at the right time. He said, I just made a poor decision in a business dealing. And he said, that I was up all night. You know what the Bible says about staying up all night? You're wasting your time. God says, I stay up. I watch over you. I'll keep you if you'll trust with me. Some of you, when you're battling where you can't sleep, put in your mind Isaiah 26.3. He will give peace. He will give you peace at that time to be able to Oh, 
this, this is what I want him to see the, the realization and the truth that's in God's Word. Yeah, he was brought up Catholic. A lot of Catholics are not encouraged to read the Word of God. And, uh, and a lot of Baptists and Lutherans and nobodies. The Word is worthy, where it brings hope and assurance. Do you agree? Yes. All right. I agree. And God agrees. The Word is the, the, the thing that will encompass your life and will keep you. It's a plumb line. All right. I wrote out on your uh, worksheet, how many times is the words no, no, and abide found in chapter 2 and 3? So some of you that didn't have the opportunity of being here last week, that was your assignment. Read the first epistle of John, chapter 2 and chapter 3. And then underline in your Bible, you're allowed to do that here. If, you, if in some way you can, then get two Bibles and show the people the one you did underline. And keep the other one for your personal work. I did it. I've done it so many times. I wrote it out on one of my bills that came in. And uh, I said, because I'm sure you're going to say, Pastor, uh, how many times? And I would tell you, I know. Now you find out. Nice guy. <laughs> Fill in how many times it says no, no, and a body. Start there. That's a simple uh, work in that particular question. Number two, write out from your Bible verses in uh, chapter 2, verse 20. And what does verse 20? Okay, if you're in the in your Bible, uh, turn over to the epistle of 1 John, chapter 2. Verse 20. Now we covered this, I believe, last week. But you have. I want you to say, I have. I have. If you're born again, you have, or you have an anointing. Wow. You have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You have to be kidding. I don't know all things. Well, wait a minute. In yourself, you don't know all things. But if you have the Spirit of God living in you, and you have a new born again spirit, you have, you have all things knowing in your heart through Christ. Well, you have a scripture to back that up of how, when, and where. If you really want to know, and I see, I look at you, and I see those hungry eyes, and I say, you really want to know. Yes. All right? It says in 1 Corinthians 2, 16, but we have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. If you, if, you hear that? If you are born again. Think about it. You have the mind of Christ. Now, it's there. It's not just going to automatically happen. You have to give effort to finding the truth of Christ and what He desires of you. And you find that from the, 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 the hand of God which sent, which sent forth the Bible to mankind. That's God breathed. That's God's Word given to all mankind. Would you agree with that? All right, I want to hear some chatter going on here. <laughs> We're working together. And then chapter 2, verse 27. These are scriptures you need to write out, you need to <coughs> memorize, or just read them over and over for a week until you can almost say them. Like uh, first, uh, for Isaiah 26, 3. I just needed a jump start to get going, but I know that scripture. I keep my mind on Christ. <clears throat> but the anointing which you have received from Him, the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you 
concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Now, there are some that would say, well, if I know, if I know all things, and I don't need anyone to teach me, I don't need to gather with other believers. No, that's not. You've got to take Scripture in light of Scripture. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 that we should not forsake the assembling together. It's just a reminder when you see these other smiley faces that, you know, they're of the same mind as you are. And they hunger for the things of God. They want to praise God. Let our lips praise the Lord, give glory to His name. I'll tell you, there's such a blessing as you go throughout your day and whatever you're doing, just keep saying unto the Lord, Father, I thank you that you have blessed me. You have given me a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and a sound mind. And someone, I have people ask me, how you doing? I said, I have a sound mind. Are you sure? <laughs> Well, the Bible says I have it, and I'm standing on it. I'm believing it. Brother said this morning, he said, it's amazing all those scriptures you can remember. Well, I think Moses died at 121. I don't know if I want to live that long. But I'm 81, so I'm heading that way. I want to live a long time. But I've been reading the Word for a long time. There's one thing that I can do is be pleasing to the Lord. And I can do that by honoring Him daily by being in His Word. And so can you. Amen? Amen. You don't have to be like Gary or any Billy Graham or anyone else. You be you. And God will bless you. He's been looking to get your attention for a long time. If I ask you this question, how do you think was the first way God got your attention. I'm going to tell you. Through your conscience. Through your conscience. How, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. How will they flee unless they hear? Something happened and all of a sudden you either looked up or you listened up. You know God is talking all the time. You just have to learn how to hear his voice. All of us do. Now, in, in, in part, I understand that. But I want to grow in that. Every time we sing a new song or we sing a, uh, the hymns or whatever, it just brings it back home and I am assured of what I believe. And you can stand on that too. Now, the next way he speaks to you is through his word. The word of God. And you say, Amen. Amen. You don't know anything about God unless you lift up this Bible. And you start reading it and believing it. Jesus said, all things are possible to those who believe. I believe. I was a non-believer. God was trying to get my attention for many years. In fact, you know, I think about this and these young people here. When I first came into the church and I went from the back row to the front row, and I sat there, and they started talking, and they were saying things, and all of a sudden I could hear what they were saying. And I said, how am I ever going to catch up? How am I going to learn these things? Oh, I was amazed at the, the, the expressions and the love that I was feeling. You know, I can feel from you at times where I may say something. I, I feel a wall go up sometimes. And I don't get discouraged. I know that wall's going to come down if you'll stay there and listen to the word and through everything that's being done. God wants to get your attention and my attention. He's got great things for you. He will bless you if you will put him first. Now, uh, your conscience. Here's where, you, here's where your conscience was first awakened. Romans chapter 1. You can read that later. We're not going to go there. Uh, I, this is so much fun. I don't have enough time. 
Uh, okay, I'll go back to where I was. All right. <laughs> I'll touch on some of the other things. Oh, what a day it's going to be with our Jesus. We will see. Amen. Amen. In Matthew 12, 37, it says, By your words, by your own words, you will be justified, and by your own words, you will be condemned. So it's in your ballpark. You know, I remember, you, none of you have ever done that. God, you made me this way. No, I didn't make you that way. <laughs> you became that way because you were looking at the wrong things, or you were doing the wrong things. Seek my heart, and you will find life, and life more abundantly. Amen. See, there's another scripture just part, jumped up in my mind. Uh, in uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 10, uh, it says, I'll let you read the whole thing and you'll find it. It says, my sheep, you know we're all sheep? Yep. Hear my voice. Once they come through the gate, Jesus or the doorway, Jesus is the doorway, he is the gate. If you go in any other, well, I believe this, or I believe that. No, you must believe according to the word of God. Well, there's so many translations. So what? Find one you like and read it. Huh? Wouldn't that be a good idea? Yes. You know, I'm going to show you how the power, the power of God's here. And I don't know if that light switch over there turns off the power. Turn around, there's only one light switch, you can't go around. Turn that light switch off. All right. Someone call up the electric company and tell them to turn the electricity back on. <laughs> no, it's right there. You can turn it back on. <laughs> she said, this guy's nuts. <laughs> there you go. The power is here. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Amen. 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 Praise God. And we got, and Jesus had 12. He had a lot of other uh, followers, but they gave up. They said, this is too tough. I'm going back. Well, have a nice trip going back. And so, by our words, we, uh, your words create a growing picture of the presence of God in your life. See, I am thankful for my wife. God blessed me abundantly. And we share our thoughts and we are our studies together. Uh, we, we, we are compatible. Janice prayed for me. Uh, she said, Lord, bring us together in the spirit, in your love, and let us walk together. And it happened. Her parents prayed for me. And of course, they didn't know what they were praying because when I got saved, I walked into her house after I got saved, fell on the floor and started bawling. And they said, I met Jesus. And they said, oh dear. <laughs> that wasn't quite the way we thought. <laughs> well, when Jesus gets a hold of your heart, things change. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. And so as we go on, let the truth abide in you. We're back to 1 John, picking up on verse 24. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. Now what abides in you is the gospel. The gospel is good news. Amen. It's not sad news. It's good news. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen. The Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Just tell him, get behind me, Satan. It is written. Jesus crushed you, and I will crush you with his love, and I will tell you of his coming. And he's coming. You know what's going to happen then. And this is the promise that he has promised us. Eternal life. I have eternal life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Do you? Yes. Do you? Yes. yes. 
I know my wife saved. Somebody else in there is saved out there. You have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Say amen. 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 Not because you belong to, you come to Woodland. We thank you for coming. Keep coming. Bring your friend. That was another thing I wanted to ask you. Do any of you have friends? <laughs>
these seeds that I'm speaking to you, which is the Word of God, will activate the power of God's Word in you. Just let it go in. Let it do its work. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. You're in this world, but not to be of this world. I don't embrace their systems and their lives. I embrace the systems of God and the truth of God's word. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what we're to do. And so, as John says, if you practice these things, you will not, uh, you will be righteous because of him. Over in Galatians, we don't have time this morning, in chapter 5, uh, it says this. I say then, walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. That these are contrary one to another so that you do not do the things you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. And it talks about every sin there is. You know that, right? You've heard that before. And listen to this, and I'll, I'll stop here, and the music department can come up. Um, against us, there's... Uh, back up here, and here it is. Okay, here it is. Uh, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if you want to know, don't practice evil. And we're, he's going to tell us and later on that sin shall not have dominion over you or control you. Don't practice lying. Practice forgiving. That, that nullifies lying. Put on the new mind of Christ. Jesus never lied. He was tempted in every way that we are, but he was without sin. And we are to imitate him as Paul and the others did. Right? Amen. 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 All right. Oh, I'm going to move my clock back so I'm not ahead. <laughs> All right. If the, the singers will come and we'll, we're going to sing a song. I love singing. Now.